In today's lesson, we are going to look at applications of polynomials. So we're just going to be looking at a couple of uh, kind of real world situations or just some scenarios involving polynomials um, and different uh, types of questions that we might have to solve. So in our first question, a box must be constructed from a piece of cardboard measuring 30 centimeters by 24 centimeters. It must be folded in the diagram shown and the capacity must be 648 centimeters cubed. And we want to determine the dimensions of the box. So we have our box here. I can label some information. I do know that I have a 24 by 30 piece of, oops, 24 by 30 piece of cardboard. I'm just getting that straight from the question. And I do know that the volume has to equal 600 and 48 centimeters cubed. So because I'm dealing with volume and because I'm dealing with a box, I mean, chances are I'm gonna be needing to do, deal with my volume formula, which is length times width times height. Now, the only thing is our box is going to get folded. Right? It's gonna get folded along these dotted lines. So we have to take into consideration that when we're looking for these measurements. So even though we know that the piece of cardboard is 24 by 30, that's not the actual piece of the box because it's going to get folded. So we're going, to, we're going to take away this little section here, this little section here, this little section, and this little section. Right? So all those sections are going to be taken away. We don't have an actual measurement for those. So let's go through and let's actually give it a value. In this case, x, 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 x. Right? Assuming it's a box and we're folding those parts up, Right, we're creating um, we're creating the same kind of height all the way around. Right, so what we can do now, or what we did, was we let x represent the depth, or you might say the height. That's all we did. And now that we know that, we can use some of that in our equation. So our volume, which we know is going to be 600, oops, 648, can equal length times width times height. Now we're gonna plug in values for those three dimensions. Or not values, but at least expressions. We know the height, we represented it as x. We already talked about that. For the length, Again, regardless of whichever part you call the length, just one dimension, let's say it's this dimension we're considering the length, we know overall it has to be at least 24, because right? 24 centimeters, that's the piece of the box, but we're removing two portions. Right? We're removing those two end pieces, we're not removing them, but in terms of the length, right? or in terms of the width, right? we're moving those two pieces or we're folding them up. So our length is actually gonna be 24 minus 2x. The other portion for the width is gonna be the same idea. It's gonna be 30 minus 2x because we're removing these two portions. So now I have my full expression for, um, for our volume. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna solve or try to find the values of x that work. So I, when we solve polynomials, we wanna set it equal to zero. So I move the 648 over. It's 24 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x times x minus 648. Now, originally it would be easy to go through and solve these polynomials. We'd set each bracket equal to zero. But because we have this here, that's gonna make it a little bit harder. Because it's no longer just three numbers that have to multiply to equal zero, set each one equal to zero, and so on. We have to do a little bit more. Right? Now we could go through and, and um, expand this and see if it works out to a polynomial that we can factor. Or, just an easier way with some of these types of questions, we can just go right to Desmos or use technology. So in this case, 
x is going to equal, and I'm going to go to Desmos and come up with our equation, or I'm going to graph it so that we can see what the x-intercepts are, the solutions. So I go to Desmos, and I'm going to enter in this equation. So we have 24 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x times x minus 648. And we can see our function now is graphed. And again, we're not concerned about the shape of the graph. We're only concerned about the x-intercepts, which we can see here. So we see that there are three of them. So that means there are three solutions, 1.06, 9, and 16.9. I just rounded it to make it a little bit easier, keeping some decimal places. So I have three possible solutions. So coming back to our question then, we need to come up with our dimensions, right? The actual question was determine the dimensions. We haven't done that yet. The solutions here, these three solutions, tell us three different possible x values. So there are three different possible heights or depths of our box. And using that, Using that, we're going to come up with the different dimensions because we do know the formulas for them, right? So if the first one, if our height is equal to 1.06 centimeters, then our length would be 24 minus 2 times 1.06. So just taking this measurement here and filling in a value for x, we get 21.88 and our width would then be 30 minus 2 times 1.06 right, just using this equation here and we get 27.88 so these are all possible dimensions right for a one box a height of 1.06 a length of 21.88 and a width of 27.88 that's a possible box that we might have. Another possible box would be using the next solution when the height is equal to nine. So if the height equals nine, then using the same formula, 24 minus two times X, or in this case, two times nine, we get six. And for a width, we get 30 minus two times nine, which is eight, or which is 12. And again, that works, right? So this would be a box of nine by six by 12. And that, that would be, those dimensions would give us the volume of 648. So let's do the third one, a height of 16.9, a length of 24 minus two times 16.9, and we get a length of negative 9.8 centimeters. Does that work? Does that make sense? In this case, no, it doesn't make sense that we can have a negative length. Right? We can't have negative measurements. So because of this negative length here, this solution does not work. So that means out of my three possible solutions, yes, they are solutions to the function, to the polynomial, but given the scenario, this one works, this one works, and this last one does not. So even though it's a solution to the equation, the only two solutions that fit or work with this scenario are the first one and the second one. The last one does not based off of this scenario. Next question, the yearly profit P of N in thousands of dollars for the sale of n thousand tennis balls can be modeled by the function p at n is equal to negative 0.08 n to the power of 3 plus 1.86 n squared plus 8 n. So we want to use this equation to determine the yearly profit on the sale of 13,000 tennis balls. So I'm going to be using this equation, but I need to figure out what do I plug in for n? What is my n value going to be? And at first glance, you might think that it's going to be 13,000 because that's how many tennis balls we're selling. But if we, if we read the question, we actually see that 
n represents thousands or n thousands of tennis balls. So that means n is already accounting for the thousands portion. So we don't actually have to write this full number. We can just write 13 because that would be the same thing of saying instead of n, we say 13, so 13,000 tennis balls. And, that kind of, and you might find that in some equations where they do that because if you can imagine if I had to cube 13,000, I'm going to be dealing with some really large numbers. And because they're only factors of 10, right, or multiples of 10, right, thousands um, or just in the tens, right, that's why it might be easier to deal with these smaller numbers. Or we can represent a variable as um, thousands of something or hundreds or millions of something. So... P, uh, P at 13 or P of 13 is going to equal negative 0 0.08 13 cubed plus 1.86 times 13 squared plus 8 times 13. So all we're doing is plugging in values um, for n. We can go through each one if we want 175.76 or negative 175.76. 314.34 plus 1 point or 104. Right? You could do all of this as one calculation if you wanted to. And you would get 242.58. Now again, keeping in mind, P of N is equal to thousands of dollars. So this actually works out. This 242.58 actually works out to 242,580. So just keeping in mind, the units actually change based on what the, uh, the variables represent. B, same idea, N equals Instead of 20,000, we can say 20. So P of 20 is equal to negative 0 0.08 times 20 cubed plus 1.86 times 20 squared plus 8 times 20. Going through and just calculating negative 640 plus 744 plus 160 we get 264. Could go back and write P13 all the way through. We did P20. And this six, 264 profit is not $264 only, but rather $264,000 based off of, again, the scenario and what the variables represent. Next one, we're dealing with the length of a rectangular dog, dog run being three meters more than twice the width. Now we want to first show this information on a diagram. So if I show this information on a diagram, the width is X or an unknown, and the length would be twice the width plus three, three or twice or three, three meters more than twice the width. So we have that there. Next, B, we want to come up with a function that represents the area. So a function will say f at x because it equals length times width for area. We can replace length and width, width with our two measurements. I'm going to put x first just for ease, especially when I'm going to multiply through. It's easier to have the single variable up front. So x times 2x is 2x squared plus 3x f at x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x. That's my function for the area. C says, what's the area when the width is 4? So when f at 4, because x represents the width, we would say 2 times 4 squared plus 3 times 4. And we end up with 44 meters squared. So when the width is 4, the area is 44 meters squared. Now B, or sorry, D is asking what width would produce 50 meters squared. So now we're working in the other direction. 
we know what the function equals, 50. We want to know what value for x gives us that measurement or that volume of 50. Now, this looks like a simple or a complex trinomial. So what we can do is actually go through, rearrange, so bring the 50 over. So 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 50. And looking at this, we would say that this looks very similar to a complex trinomial. Now we could go through and try to factor it, right? We could look for numbers that multiply to negative 100 and add to 3, or we can just use the quadratic formula. I'm going to go through and use the quadratic formula, a little bit easier. Right? So I have to designate an A, B, and C value. And then the quadratic formula is x equals negative b, so negative 3, plus or minus b squared, or 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 50, all divided by 4, or sorry, 2a, or 2 times 2. I can go through and simplify this, I get x equals negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 409, divided by 4. Now, we are going to separate this into two portions. We talked about with solving the quadratic formula. Hopefully you remember that we can separate it into two parts where we add or subtract. So we get x minus 3 plus the square root of 409 divided by 4. And we get x equals negative. x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 409 divided by 4. Now, before we go any further, looking at these two possible answers, is there one that doesn't make sense? Well, taking a look at the second one here, this one here, I have negative 3 minus the square root of 409 divided by 4 that's not going to work out because that's going to keep on getting more negative when I subtract. And when I divide by four, that's not going to change it. So this is going to give me a negative X value. So if I think about it, that's actually giving me a negative width, which is which we don't want. That doesn't make sense. So this portion of our quadratic formula, this possible solution, even though it's a solution for our quadratic in this case, it's not a solution for our scenario because of the negative value. So this does not work. We have a negative width. If you look at the top one, this one does work. Right? This one does work because we're adding to that negative. So it's going to push it over and make it a positive number divided by 4, which gives us a positive number. So this does work. And if we actually go through and calculate it, we get x is equal to 4.3. So this actually does work. The second one does not work. We end up with negatives. So again, just reasons for why. Um, again, you might have to take a look at the actual solution. Does it make sense in terms of the actual scenario? Right. So in this case, one does, the other doesn't. The last question an oil tank is being drained. The volume, V of T, in liters of oil remaining in the tank after T minutes can be modeled by the function V of T is equal to 0 0.28 times 28 minus T cubed. A wants us to find the amount of oil after, at three different times. One, initially. So initially, the time is going to equal zero. So this means V at zero is equal to 0 0.28 times 28 minus 0 cubed. We go through, this is just a calculation, 0 0.28 times 28 cubed, and we should get 6,146.56 liters. So in the initial time, V at 0, this is the volume. After 10 minutes, it's going to be the exact same thing, except we're plugging in 10 for t. So 28 minus 10 cubed 
0 0.28 times 18 cubed, we have 1,632.96 liters. And the third part, after 18, again, same idea. Plugging in 18 for T and solving. 0 0.28 times 28 minus 18 cubed, we get 0 0.28 times 10 cubed, which is equal to 280 liters. So all the, all the first part was, was just plugging in values. B is asking how many, after how many minutes is the tank drained? So in this example, we're not given a T value, but we are told that the volume is going to equal zero. So in our equation then, zero equals 0 0.28 times 28 minus T cubed. And looking at this, this looks like one of our factored polynomials. So we can actually go through and easily solve for what t has to be. In order for these two things to multiply together and get zero, this bracket has to work out to zero, right? Because the 0 0.28 is gonna be there, that's just a number, we don't change that when we plug anything in. But if we plug in a value for t, we want this bracket to equal zero so that 0 0.28 times zero cubed gives us zero. So we do that by setting this bracket equal to zero. So 28 minus t equals zero. Move the 28 over, we get negative t equals negative 28. And we get then t is equal to 28. So that is our solution. You could look at it and say, well, why? what happened to the cubed? Well, if I was to actually expand this, 0 0.28 times 28 minus t times 28 minus t times 28 minus t, it's the same three brackets, right? So even if it's cubed, right, or squared or whatever it happens to be, we only have to take the numbers inside the bracket and set it equal to zero, right? Because we would just be doing the same calculation over and over again and getting the same answer of 28. Still brings us back to here. It's all the same. So after 28 minutes, the tank is drained. So again, this this lesson is just focusing on just different applications of the polynomials, different ways, not different ways of solving them, but solving them in different contexts. Right. The main thing would be understanding that in some cases, the solutions we get might not work based off of what the scenario is. Right? So we see in the one with the dog park, one solution didn't work because it gave us a negative measurement. When we look at the dimensions of the box, one measurement didn't work or one solution didn't work because it gave us a negative measurement. Right? So again, just making sure that when you look at context problems or application problems or word scenarios, you have to check to see does one of these um, does one of these answers or solutions give us a, um, an answer to the question that doesn't make sense?